up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Park Cameras, and today we are looking at something which I think is pretty cool. It's the new Sony 35mm f1.4 G Master lens. It's just been announced. And my very first thought when Sony sent me this lens to kind of test it out, review it, and all that kind of stuff, I, I suddenly couldn't believe that there wasn't already a 35mm G Master lens. So it makes so much sense that that is what is being added to the G Master range. Of course, if you're familiar with the G Master range at all, you know it's the kind of top line of Sony lenses. There's some really nice stuff in there. Primes, zoom lenses, and it's, it's actually really exciting that there's now a 35mm as well. Now, of course, you might be sitting there thinking, but there's already a 35mm f1.4. There's the Zeiss Sony model, which is actually, I think, quite a nice lens. I actually use it for ver all kinds of various things, portraits, landscape, video in particular, but this is a little bit different. Of course, it's got the G Master sign off, so it is, it is a different kind of level of lens. And I think it actually gives you a slightly different look to your photos or your videos, certainly in terms of things like, like bokeh and just the sharpness, you know, the crispness, the clearness. So we're gonna get into all of that. Let's start off by talking about image quality because really when it comes down to it, that's what really matters in a lens. Let's talk about image quality. So I had this lens for about a day. I just spent the whole day with it, taking photos, doing a little bit of video, doing basically as much as I could with it that I would normally do with a 35 mil. And I've got to say, this is such a nice lens to use. Now, image quality wise, as you would expect from a G Master f1.4, you've got nice, super crisp, super clear, nice and sharp images. Seems to be sharp, obviously in the center, but right the way out to the edges as well. Even shooting wide open at f1.4, really nice and sharp. Even when shooting like landscapes and stuff like that at f1.4, which I wanted to test out because I love having that kind of blurred foreground shooting off into the distance. And then of course, like down a path or something like that, where you've got the, the background, the focal point in focus and a bit of a blurred foreground. Ooh, I think that looks really nice. And that's certainly the case here. The, the, the kind of blurred areas, you know, we'll go into the proper full on bokeh in a second, but the blurred foreground, the blurred background, it looks really nice. It's super smooth. You know, it just it's just a very lovely looking thing. Like, I think the colors look good. I think that probably the Zeiss model is a little bit more known for the contrast kind of popping, whereas this probably has a slightly more kind of smooth, natural, clear look. It's, it's just very nice. Seems to be really minimal flaring and distortion, even shooting into the sun or shooting into the light. Didn't seem to really cause any problems. And that bokeh, which is obviously a big deal when we're talking about an f1.4 lens, it looks really good. So I shot obviously a bunch of landscape with this, and then I had a little bit of time doing some portrait as well. Fortunately, Matilda was free, so I was able to do some stuff. And I've got to say, that that blurred background just looks so good. You know, if you can get some lights in there, they're nice and kind of round. There's no artifacting. They're nice and smooth. You don't have that weird kind of jaggy look to it or, or, or kind of weird onion skin or cat's eye kind of stuff. It, it looks good. I think it looks very good. I think it's gonna be a very good option for portraits if you want to do a slightly wider angle for your portraits. And then of course it doubles up perfectly for landscape, video, all kinds of stuff. It's such a great all round option. And of course that f1.4 aperture, not only is that gonna give you lovely, beautiful out of focus areas, it lets in a lot of light which means you can stay out much longer. You don't have to worry so much about bumping that ISO up. You've got a lot of options. It gives you a lot of versatility for when you can shoot, where you can shoot. This is gonna be a great one for weddings, I would imagine, if you like using a slightly wider angle for that kind of thing, and then maybe have an 85, you know, or, or whatever really. But I think this is gonna be a great one for events, for, for weddings, you know, all kinds of stuff where maybe you don't have such great light and you need that versatility. Something which surprised me when I was shooting with the lens is how close in I was able to get to my subject. So I actually tested this out as I started realizing that it just was it was constantly focusing. And I tested this out with a leaf with the sun. So I was testing kind of the flaring and I just kept getting closer and closer and closer. And the actual close focusing distance is 27 centimeters or 25 centimeters if you manually focus. But it felt closer than that, it felt really, really close. And actually I was able to get in really tight with this leaf. And that's that's a really useful thing to have in a lens like this because, you know, 35 mil, it's not super wide at all. You know, it's kind of a, a standard kind of lens. 
But being able to get nice and close to your subject, that's a big plus for a lens like this. So let's talk about the autofocus. Now, as you'd expect, and as I probably, I feel like I say this in every Sony video, Sony autofocus is just unbelievable. You know, whether you're using the a7 III, which is what I'm shooting on right now, the a7R III, a7R IV, a7R IV, a9, any of those cameras, the autofocus is so good. You can just rely on it, the eye autofocus, just general autofocus for video as well. It's so useful to have. And with this lens, as you would expect, it basically works flawlessly. You know, the eye autofocus for, for portraits is just unbeatable. That's just amazing. Takes takes pretty much all the work out of focusing for portraits. You're always going to get the shot. You're going to nail the focus. But it has two XD linear motors, so it's super fast. But more importantly, I think, especially if you want to use this for events or weddings or something like that, it's super quiet as well for focusing, which means you can be you know, really quiet, you can be really subtle. You know, you don't have to worry so much about that kind of noise, or for video as well. If you're using a shotgun mic, you just don't even have to worry at all about any focusing noise. Now, this isn't new. Obviously, we've had this in, in a bunch of lenses before, and you'd probably expect this from a G Master lens, but just goes to show what that G Master part of it kind of means. Just every part of this lens is designed to be just outstanding. And that actually goes into the kind of design and the feel of this lens, which we should talk about, because obviously that's important. This is smaller than the last 35mm f1.4, than the Zeiss model. This is, is lighter, I think, as well. It certainly feels lighter when I was kind of holding them side by side. It fits incredibly nicely on the front of these cameras. It makes them a joy to use because they, they feel like they're pretty much the perfect size and weight. It balances really nicely. You've got the aperture ring on the lens, which I love. I always love that. You've got the option to, to click it, to de-click it. Now, I always think, everyone always says that's great for video, right? I, I always think you're probably realistically not going to be changing aperture while filming that often. But even with that said, it's nice to be able to, to turn the click off to, to get rid of that. Because again, if you want to be subtle in an event or a wedding or something like that, you know, you don't necessarily want to have the clicking. So then you can be perfectly silent. I think that's a great option to have on there. You've also got the focus hold button, which you see on loads of lenses across the Sony range. Although this can be fully customized, so you can actually, you can change it to different things if you want to, which is, which is again, really handy. The actual lens feels incredibly well made. It's very solid and it's also dust and moisture resistant as well. As you'd, again, as you'd expect. Now, none of this really surprises me that much. It's a G Master lens. You know, you come to expect a certain level from a G Master lens. This definitely hits it. I think it's a really awesome lens. Is it the most exciting uh, kind of addition to the G Master range? Maybe not, but I think that's only because there was already a 35mm f1.4. And I kind of couldn't believe there wasn't already a G Master 35mm. I just never thought about it. So while it maybe isn't the most exciting addition to the G Master range, I think it's an essential one. I think it needs to be in there because this now sets up the primes, you know, really, really nicely. And I think, I mean, certainly if I was looking at getting the 35mm f1.4 Zeiss option or the G Master option, now I would absolutely go for the G Master. There's, there's no question in my mind. I prefer the look of the images. I prefer the feel, the style of the lens. That previous lens, the 35mm f1.4 Zeiss model, that was really nice and I used that loads. I use that a lot for all kinds of different things, including paid client work and all kinds of stuff. But this new model is just the new standard, you know, and I would generally look to choose that over the other one. Obviously price comes into it a little bit and you can check that out by checking the link down in the description to go and see the full price, the description, all of that kind of stuff by clicking that link. My overall thoughts are that I love this lens. You know, you can probably tell by the fact that I've been talking about how much I love it this whole time. Do I have any negatives to talk about this lens? Because, I'll, you know, it's important to, to talk about that. I don't really. I don't really have anything that I don't like about it. I think size and weight is basically spot on. I think image quality is great. I think it's great for video. The autofocus works great. I don't really have anything negative to say about it, so I'm sorry about that. I wish, I guess I wish it cost like 50 pounds. I'd be amazing, but you know, it's not realistic, is it? So <laughs> in theory, maybe it would have been nice to have f1.2 rather than f1.4 for the G Master model. That would differentiate it even further from the previous model. Uh, but for me personally, I would rarely use f1.2 over f1.4. I don't see, at 35 mil, I don't see enough of a difference. You know, there's obviously the, the light situation, but these cameras are great with ISO anyway. So if you're already shooting f1.4 for the light, and then you bump up that ISO, 
I don't know if you're gonna really miss the fact that it's not f1.2. That would have been a nice thing just to have that in there, but I guess at some point keeping the lens smaller and, and kind of more compact for these cameras was more important. And I think that's probably the right call. I know there's gonna be some people out there who probably wish it was f1.2, but I think that was probably the right call. Now, if you have any questions about this lens, I did as much as I could with it in the time that I had. I tried to learn as much about it as I could. Absolutely let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to let you know whatever answers you may require or just let me know your thoughts down there as well. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Are you going to stick with the 35mm f1.4 Zeiss model? Do you even do you even care? Do you, do you have one that you like over the other? Do you already have that lens and you're looking to upgrade but would you? All that kind of stuff. I'd love to hear down in the comments. Of course, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video because that really helps us out. I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.